Still some brollies up there, I can see, from one of our uh, spectators. So there must be some rain in the air. But, uh, yeah, this race is going to be 25 minutes. Second race of the day for the 9-11 Challenge and the Box to Cup. And once again, Paul Jody's back with me. Yeah, good afternoon, Matt. Yeah, my, uh, my fourth and hopefully, well, not hopefully final, because I'm rather enjoying it, visit <laughs> to the commentary box. But it does involve crossing the track, which I always find slightly weird. And, uh, yeah, fantastic race. We need to keep an eye on a few things. We have uh, the bright blue number nine car there, sat on pole position of Rob Hollyman, the, uh, the 964. And, of course, Rob retired in race one with a misfire. And they were struggling in the pits to get the car to misfire. So praying that it's not one of these things that only occurs in the heat of battle. Yeah. So slight question mark hanging over that car. They may have fixed it since I, I actually wandered in there. And you know when you wander in and you think, hmm, you're all busy, aren't you? <laughs> so you don't like to linger <laughs> no, or yeah, ask right. too many questions. But, yeah, they were uh, working hard on that one. So uh, that should be interesting because that battle between Rob and the... Uh, the white car with the blue stripes. It's rather famous livery action on Tim Bates's car, the other car on the front row. It's based on the uh, the famous Brumost Porsche team from Jacksonville in Florida, who had a lot of success in Daytona and, and circuits like that. So uh, hopefully we're going to have a little bit of a battle there. And uh, we had a few other dramas going on down in the Boxsters. We had uh, Vikram Sudera, unfortunately, black, black flagged for... Uh, I think he realised he, he slightly jumped starts, didn't he? And then tried to get back into his slot, which yeah. uh, was slightly frowned on, unfortunately. But, uh, you know, this is an ex inexperienced racer. He's only in his fifth race. So uh, these things do happen and a little bit of a learning curve for everybody. And, uh, yeah, I think we're just slightly down to conditions. Walking across, it's just every now and then it starts to just to spit with rain, but then doesn't seem to go anywhere with it and backs back off again. So... A little bit awkward for people. I don't think it's quite enough to want a wet weather setup on the car and soften your car up. But uh, it's, it's going to be just preying on the drivers' minds as they go on this uh, this long, long, it's a long lap, isn't it, the Snetterson 300 circuit? And as they go round just on their uh, green flag lap. So, uh, yeah, hopefully we can have another couple of cracking laps. We had a bit of a battle going on. We saw Mike Thompson take his first win in the Boxster Cup. We saw uh, Darren King really lead all the way just for the last lap and a half that uh, he was denied when he, he just got slightly... Apparently there was a slight touch there, I think, but Darren wasn't bearing any ill will over it. That just nudged him onto the grass. He said, I was going across the grass. I thought, oh, there goes P1, Oop, there goes P2. <laughs> he said, I was praying I didn't lose it, drop it, see the third car go past me as well. No, he did well, didn't he? So, yeah, we're looking forward to this uh, final race from the Porsche uh, Boxster Cup and also for the 911 uh, Challenge Series. So let's hope there's a good fight out front because Tim Bates was just allowed to get away, just like he has done on the two previous occasions uh, so far this year. But uh, looking forward to this, and we can take you through how the grid's going to line up then for this 25-minute race. It will be Rob Hollyman to start from uh, pole position in the number nine car with uh, 12 Tim Bates alongside on that front row. Uh, Stuart Jeffco then on row number two with uh, number 90 Sarah Thompson. So hope for better things for Sarah. She had a bit of a dismal race, didn't she, in that uh, early one? Well, we saw lots of overtaking, but yeah, she got slightly swamped at the start and then got called out on the slippery surface later on. Yeah, I think it was the weather that really did catch her out. So she starts there, but in a good position once again. Uh, row three then sees the Neil and Harvey car, but it's the Neil Harvey a driven car for this race so he'll be there on the outside sorry inside of row three uh, Wayne Gregory on the outside row four then has uh, Peter Evans and Darren King the fifth row is going to be Darren Lebet and uh, Vikram Sidira. Uh, row six Mike Thompson after his first win hopefully that's not gone to his head uh, I'm sure he'll be quick again from the sixth row with uh, Eric Bridges alongside uh, Graham Hurd and Steve Shaw line up on row number seven row eight we'll then see Perry Darling and Faye Noble Evans she came through in a, a good solid uh, top six or seven result I think in race one so uh, Faye's looking good from 16th on the grid uh, Simon Ruff Award and uh, Shiraz Khan in 18th and Michael O'Sullivan is the man who brings up the rear of the grid in what's going to be 19th position that's right yep yeah, nice, nice big grid just to round off the uh, contribution of Porsche Club Motorsport to the day and uh, so I'm really looking forward to this one I think for a, a few people it's going to be that uh, that run down to the first corner is going to be interesting can Rob Hollyman out drag Tim Bates this time because I think he lost out last time round and again, the pole sitter, Sarah, Sarah Thompson, in the Boxster Cup entry. Yeah, she didn't make the best of getaways. And unfortunately, some of the people around her did. So uh, maybe she had a little bit of time to think about that. Maybe just adjust her technique maybe a bit. And uh, hopefully we can see Sarah lead into the first corner. Yeah, that would be nice indeed. She's, uh, she's qualified there on merit and pace. So it would be nice to see her get a good solid result out of this uh, final race uh, for this category. As the cars work their way up towards the grid uh, in these uh, challenging conditions which they've been today. I said earlier that we, uh, we've had some trickier conditions up and down the country so far today. I think we've had the best of the, the bad weather. Uh, because there's been a lot of rain up, it kind of 
Silverstone way and that and they've had it quite quite heavy so we've done well to kind of sneak under the radar here so let's hope we get to the end of the day without too much more wet weather as the drivers come to the grid oh and Rob Hollyman's going to pull off the grid by the looks of it because he is he's got that misfire hasn't he he's still there by the sounds of it that car doesn't sound good does no. it that's a real shame as he's just going to go and tuck that car away and uh, yeah that could have been a real pace setter and that was the, the battle at the front that i was really looking forward to but if you've got a misfire and you're not going to get off the line very well you don't want to be sat there right at the front of a grid so a uh, smart call on a safety angle i think there from rob but a big disappointment yeah indeed it can be quite dangerous so he's done a, a fantastic job in realizing that and staying out of harm's way so rob hollyman out of the race unfortunately from pole position but we are good to go with the five second board uh, now being held on the gantry we are very shortly to get this 25 minute race underway and tim bates has done exactly the same as what happened to victor him uh, earlier on he's gone and the red lights haven't even come on yet now they go out and uh, that's definitely going to incur a, a problem Sarah Thompson I think was a little bit further up from uh, where she should be as well so a few drivers being caught out by that uh new system on the gantry uh, so Tim Bates is off but up towards the first corner already uh, second place is going to be the car of uh, Neil Harvey by the looks of it so he's going to be the best of the starters from the front of the grid and which of the boxers has got the best of the starts we'll wait for them to reappear into the Wilson hairpin but I don't think it's going to be Sarah Thompson again unfortunately um, no, that, Tim Bates has got a sheepish look about himself <laughs> hasn't he he wasn't exactly why. committed through Wilson's I thought there. well it's too late now isn't it you've got to go for it you've done you've done the punishment um, you've done the crime shot, sorry, so you've got to get away and you take whatever punishment comes. That's right, just trying to quickly make out, didn't quite catch which box is actually leading the boxster category there, but uh, certainly we're seeing those absolutely gorgeous two white Porsches steam away. It looks like it could be Darren Labette, actually, I think, but it's, uh, Darren King diving down the inside to take the class lead. Certainly, is that Wayne Gregory, actually? Oh, sorry, I think you're right, it yeah. is. It's, yeah, the un it's the, there's the three, uh, three or four unique cars in there, actually, and it's uh, sometimes hard to tell them apart. Yeah, they don't make it clear for us, do they, unfortunately, but uh, I think Wayne Gregory there in second, but yeah, you're right, Darren King goes to the lead, so number 17 gets himself up front, which is uh, a good start from him. Uh, Peter Evans is doing better this time as well. Uh, Touchwood, he's, he's escaped the first few corners, so he's up there in third position, and then behind... Oh, Sarah Thompson is going to lose the back end again. She goes one way, then the other, and goes right into the pack. And there's contact between one, two, three cars in the end. And a further contact further back as the uh, car, which is uh, unfortunately unavoidable there, uh, brings the melee to a sudden end, which is a real shame for Sarah because she almost caught it. But once you go one way, you tend to go the other. It's that little bit of a pendulum effect, unfortunately. And certainly, I think that was uh, Faye Noble Evans caught up in there and Stephen Shaw. And I think there might be one other car that went off on the other side of the circuit. That's Stephen Shaw's car. Um, yeah, 76. Yeah, Faye Noble Evans. And I, there was a car off on the inside of the circuit. They're yeah. on the outside of the corner, I think. Yeah, I think there were two, actually, because one spun and then the other one collected it. So I think we could have a couple more. Whether they've got going, uh, we'll have to wait and see. But uh, Tim Bates, unaware of all of this, goes through up across the line. And are we going to get a safety car here? Well, not yet. So they're confident that they can do something with those three cars which is a bit surprising but uh, Tim Bates goes on his way uh, we then wait for the next of the 911s to come through there's one of them which has got uh, the damage after being or collecting the car which was on the inside of the corner yeah that's just ducked out behind uh, out of our sight just before we could positive, positively identify that might have been Vikram Sudera but I'm not convinced yeah, so real shame. We've lost three or four in the early stages of this race, which is uh, not good news at all. But we're still looking for some good racing. Uh, the ones that haven't come through, of course, Rob Hollyman was not there anyway. Uh, Sarah Thompson has been involved. Darren Labet has been involved. Uh, Graham Hurd has been involved, along with uh, Shaw and also Noble Evans. So, yeah, three we thought, and then the other two as well, of Labet and Hurd. So the safety car now has finally been called for, which is no real surprise with those those cars on the outside of uh, Oggies, and they're going to take quite a, uh, a while to recover. Uh, hopefully some of them will just be able to be pushed away. It depends if there's any significant damage to some of the others which need to be lifted away, and hopefully the number 22 machine there of Peter Evans does see the yellow flags. He does at the last minute and uh, slows the pace of his car, but uh, not the start we wanted there, Paul. It was uh, quite unfortunate for where Sarah went round. Very much so, actually, to be quite honest, and also unfortunate that because it's early in the race and all the cars are so close together, there was just a little bit of a concertina effect behind it with uh, cars left with nowhere to go as other people try to avoid her car didn't quite and uh, yeah we collected a few cars down there but uh, you know th these things happen in racing and it's, it's early in the race it's uh, you know unfortunately we've had a very clean day from the Porsche perspective so far without the safety car or anything coming out or no major incidents even when the track was very very slippery earlier on so uh, just looking through yeah we had a few people not come through yet as you said earlier on yeah I think it's Graham Hurd and uh, 
Sarah Thompson and oh, Rob Hollyman we know about, don't we? So it's now everyone coming back to the line. This is just going to get everyone behind the safety car and give the uh, the marshals some clear space to actually just put everything back together. Certainly is, and we're going to get the red flag actually in the end because it's going to take longer, I think, than they expected. So uh, yeah, quite a few cars to clear up. Of course, we probably haven't got that many flatbeds to recover all four or five cars which are down there. So. Uh, there's a lot to be done to clear up. There's a bit of debris on the circuit as well. So uh, there's going to be a lot of martial uh, power and action to try and get that one resolved, which is not the way we wanted this uh, race to kind of start, but look good to see that all the drivers, as always, are out in the cars. They're having a chat. They're discussing what happened and uh, kind of commiserating one another down there. Yeah, yeah, because I think sometimes, you know, it swings and roundabouts, isn't it? You get caught up in these things. Sometimes you're the person that's triggered it. It just happens. And, uh, you know, I think it's very, very easy in motorsport to spend hours and hours analysing decisions that people have made in split seconds. Mm. You know, and we see that at all levels of the sport. People are in the car. They're reacting. They're working on what they know and what they can see and uh, yeah you know sometimes the, the, the phrase racing instant gets bandied around a lot because quite often that's what it is indeed and i think going back to your point about being early in the race and everyone bunched together of course you are uh, very close in terms of where you are in the field and uh, most of the time you are unsighted because you come around that corner you have a car directly in front of you which you can't see what's happened in front of you so they all kind of take evasive action you then find yourself bang on the scene hitting that car and it is just the nature of the, the beast really isn't it because early in the race and these things do happen unfortunately yeah, yeah. as you say it's that restricted vision so that you're tucked up right up the back of a car in front because you're trying to get a good exit and follow him out the corner and maybe get past him and then uh, if he suddenly jinks out the way because he's seen something you see it that fraction later Indeed. So all the cars now being brought to uh, a hold on the grid. So they'll all get regridded in probably the original grid order, actually, because we would not really completed a lap. We had done a lap, but of course, not much further than that. So I reckon we'll go back to an uh, original grid for this, uh, barring the, the holes we had. Uh, just wondering if Rob Hollyman can possibly get that problem rectified. That's um, right. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping he's realised there's a red flag. Although I must admit, if he didn't rectify it in the two, two yeah. plus hours between the races or... He may suddenly go, ah, oh, I know what that is. And uh, we'll, we'll get a resolution to it. That is, uh, yeah, there are quite a few holes in the grid. So this is suddenly think there's people in there suddenly thinking that I can get a strong finish out of this. So it's interesting. We saw Darren King take the lead earlier on. Darren has actually had a win earlier this year at Brands Hatch. But that was in a race where um, we actually only had, we actually had the race results were called after two laps. We actually only had two racing laps. And um, that was unfortunate. So we had a, a big incident with Vikram Sudera, who's actually out today in a brand new car. So he managed to totally destroy his car at Brands Hatch. And uh, fantastic work by the marshals and everyone down there to get him back together. But I'm um, just looking at the cars being slotted in. We've just seen the yellow car of uh, yellow and black car of Mike Thompson. Now, Mike was much farther down the grid than he'd expected. And in fact, he'd had quite a good start looking at this because he'd actually got himself up to uh, fourth in class from quite a way down the grid, I think it was earlier on. Because yeah. this grid is the second best qualifying time that you did this morning. So um, you can basically, you know, you can have a disaster in race one and still have a good finish starting position for race two, for example. So uh, someone like Mike, who's actually extended his championship lead this morning when uh, he took that race win in race one, if he can, uh, he's got less opposition and can get make game places early. Then uh, he's look, he's going to be a happy bunny. I think he was 16th on the grid overall. So that would have been about 12th in class, wouldn't it? So, yeah, uh, yeah, it wasn't a good second lap no. for Mike. But suddenly there's, um, I'm, I'm looking at the grid. I think there are only four cars possibly in front of him. Yeah, so this has been a nice turnaround for, for Mike, looking to do the double here after waiting uh, all of these years for race victories, uh, waiting this year for being very consistent, but finally getting another one. He might be able to do it again here. So uh, we'll see what he can achieve once this race gets back underway. But uh, as we said, the small matter of the clear up to be done down there at uh, Oggy's Corner with three cars we saw, but there could be more just out of uh, mm. camera shot, unfortunately. And, and the other thing to bear in mind, and you can see it nicely actually in, in the shot, is those no, those yellow those uh, yellow squares with a black cross on the back of the car are the novice novice cross basically those are drivers who, who are newbies you know they haven't already got six signatures on their license yet so in which case that's when the cross disappears so they're starting their racing career so we do have drivers out there who are really just you know learning it this you know they have not been on the grid that many times they haven't encountered these situations before you know as we as we saw earlier on when the, the light slightly fooled Vikram that was that was just you know there's nothing malicious going on there in race one that was a driver who just never encountered that situation before and made the wrong call basically mm. and uh, these things happen and 
well, it happens to the best of them because Tim Bates is exactly the same. So yeah, an experienced yeah. racer like Tim, if he can do it, then anyone can, can't they, really? Yeah, so yeah, That's right. And I was admiring this new lighting gantry we have here. I think it's a fantastic thing. So we are actually... Uh, oh, they, they're putting them on a holding grid and then regridding further up because I think Tim has just moved, been moved up to yeah. where he was previously. So uh, th th this, this might mean he might get away with these little jump starts <laughs> earlier on as well, actually. I don't know how that, if that gets erased from the uh, the memory of the clerk of the course at this point. I suppose so. It is kind of a, a fresh start, isn't it? So uh, he might have escaped that if he's lucky. Just don't do it again. <laughs> yeah, that's probably going to be the, uh, the, the the key phrase, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tried it once, didn't like it. <laughs> indeed, indeed. So uh, just waiting for all this to uh, get itself back into position and just waiting for, of course, everything to be cleared over there at the, uh, the right-hander of Oggies. But uh, for now, we're just uh, waiting for everything to settle down. But uh, up until this point, it's been a, a good day. And uh, as I said, unfortunately, this has happened. But uh, we've really enjoyed these races so far today. And of course, uh, I think that the reason maybe that the two laps were only kind of classified at brands, you were on a very big weekend there, weren't you? The GT World Challenge. It was very much so. And they, they have, you know, even their qualifying sessions and practice sessions were going out on live TV. So that there were, there were deadlines that the TV people couldn't meet. So sometimes when you are the... Uh, you know, one of the lesser championships, and we were literally in and out on the first day of it. It's the, uh, yeah, you know, the risk you take, unfortunately. But uh, you know, we did have a lengthy delay, so you know, the cars were if you like on the track for quite a long time, just not racing, unfortunately. But we did have a, a great second race, and it's, uh, you know, it's nice for these drivers to say that they've actually been out on the Brands Hatch Grand Prix circuit. We've got the Silverstone Grand Prix circuit later on in the year, and uh, you know, you can literally come in and in your first year of racing, sample, you know, some of the most famous circuits in the country. It's a great calendar that uh, Porsche put together once again this year. So uh, lots to look forward to throughout the season. As we said, Alton Park, Silverstone Grand Prix, back at Brands Hatch uh, that weekend uh, on the Indy circuit. And uh, then it's off to Donington. Seems a long way away, doesn't it, October? But uh, guarantee you'll come around quick. Yeah, it's unusually late. I could, we, mm. we once finished our season in the first weekend of September when we had the festival of Porsche at Brands Hatch. So, uh, yeah, it does seem rather late. It's going to get dark early in the end it of is. October, isn't it? So uh, we've got that to look forward to. Uh, but uh, Darlington's another circuit that always seems to provide good racing and uh, a very, very popular one. And nice and central for us because we do have quite a lot of races and teams from uh, up in Yorkshire. The Strasse we saw earlier on in the Porsche Club Championship with uh, Chris Dyer and Pete Morris. They actually are based up in there. So it's uh, nice to give them not quite so far to travel. Uh, the team down there at Oggies are doing well. We've already got uh, Sarah Thompson's car on the uh, low loader. We've got the other one over there as well. I think of Faye. As Faye's just being put up onto yeah. a low loader. It looks like they're just about to lift um, Stephen. Stephen Shaw's. There's a little bit of uh, cleaning up going on the tracks. So There's possibly some fluid down. Uh, the two we had over here on the inside have gone, which is good. So we, saw, we saw one that actually then pulled off on the uh, Wellington Strait, didn't we? Oh, yes, we sorry, did. Sorry, the yeah. Bentley Strait, sorry. Yeah. yeah, that's correct. So, uh, you know, that may have actually got itself so far out of the way that we don't have to worry about that too much. Looks like quite a lot of fluid actually went down. It does, doesn't it? So uh, Marshall's working hard and the circuit staff here at uh, Snetterton making sure that's all good and clean and ready to go once the race does get back underway. But it's a perfect opportunity because uh, we see the Marshalls working out on circuit, but a great chance to say thank you so much to all the uh, Marshalls here this weekend at Snetterton, the Orange Army, who do a grand job of uh, making sure everything's looked after, everything's as safe as possible. And we say it many a time, but we really do mean it. Without them, we would not be able to do what we love so much, whether watch it, take part in it, um, whatever it is, the marshals do keep this show running. So big, big thanks to the uh, volunteer marshals. It's uh, good to say as well, they do this for the love of the sport. Um, so thank you very much, guys and girls, for your help and uh, all your hard work this weekend. It doesn't go unnoticed, I think it's fair to say. I think that's very much appreciated by people at all the levels of the sport. Exactly as you said, there would be no motorsport if we didn't have people willing to take on these roles, be they trackside, in Park Ferme, in the collecting area, on the uh, start-finish line. I've always wanted to wave the chequered flag. Maybe I can <laughs> one day. And I, and I actually really like this idea that we have now where people could come along for a taste a day mm. to be a marshal. Yeah. You know, I, and I think I think it might have been actually at Brands Hatch and there were people being taken. I'd just shown everything in just every role and they put they a little look into race control and uh, a whole tour place just to get an understanding of what's involved. And uh, yeah, it, it is a great way to just to get that little bit closer to what's going on in motorsport. I did have a marshal once say to me, actually, after he pushed one of our cars away, that uh, it was the only way he ever was going to get his hands on a race car. <laughs> Fair enough, isn't it? Hard <laughs> to argue. Yeah. We've all been in that position, pit lane, pushing a car out the pit lane, helping it out. It's, uh, it's nice to get involved, isn't it? Get your hands dirty now and again. 
Um, so there's Stephen Shaw's car, which is now being taken uh, away. So he is good. Hopefully they'll get that repaired. Uh, there's Faye's car, Faye Noble Evans, who is now being uh, lifted back onto the, the flatbed. So uh, quick work there. Hasn't taken long at all. So all three cars now, I think, have been recovered. Uh, luckily here at Snetterton these days, there's lots of places you can duck and dive. So those recovery vehicles will be off the circuit pretty much straight away. And there's the other one. That's uh, Graham Hurd, isn't it? It is, yeah. He's had quite quite, an, quite a busy day, basically. So that car's being towed. I'm still not convinced that was the car we saw off on the Bentley Straight because I thought it was a lighter coloured car. I think that was Darren Lebet's possibly, wasn't it? Ah, you're right. He hasn't... Our, our race winner from the very first round of the championship. Mm. Yes, that would be right. It would be... But it's white and With purple black, flashes, yeah. yeah. That could be, actually. Yeah, I think that almost certainly is Darren's car. So, uh, yeah, an eventful day so far. And I think probably with the red flag, it meant, just meant that we could clear those cars up quicker than we could if they had to pause every now and then for a safety car train to go around. Well, if you think of it, it's taken probably the best part of 10 minutes. So we'd already been now probably into the last 10 minutes of the race, which is not fair. They pay the money, don't they, to, mm. to go racing. So we want to give them as much racing as possible. And uh, luckily today here on day one, time does allow that to happen because curfew is at 6.30. Uh, we were scheduled to finish at 5.30, so we will be a little bit behind, but we have got the time to play where, with, which is always a help. Uh, I think they're going to try and assist Darren Labette's car. If it can be towed, then they're going to try and give it a tow, um, but we'll see what they do with that. It's quite a way off the circuit, which is, which is good, and uh, it's, a, it's a long straight, which always helps. Uh, as well that's right yeah it's uh, we, we've got the camera angle of it and uh, yeah it's round the corner isn't it for us which is strange i can see actually Dar i think that's darren stood there in his race suit so he's obviously okay so it's just a car issue but uh, yeah the car there's lots of looking at the car isn't there which makes you wonder what quite what they're looking at but unfortunately the bridge is in the way so we can't quite see it it is indeed so uh, darren just being told maybe what to do uh stephen shaw's car now okay that's, uh, okay they're going to lift stephen shaw's car off and they're going to go and pick darren Lebet's car up so they've only uh, got the three or two low loaders, so uh, that's that's good good uh, thinking there, actually. Don't drop it from there. That would be disastrous. That's right. It's, it's, uh, yeah, just look after a car. Yeah, it's someone guiding it down, holding the wheels. Quite heavy, aren't they, Porsches? Um, yeah, it's going to be 1,300 kilos a car, effectively, So uh, with, with the weights that we actually run them on. It's down a few. So, uh, yeah, a little bit of a dent in the front. That, um, Stephen Shaw actually does run a bodywork company, so oh, I think he can actually look after that himself. He did actually, because we had the rules earlier on, a few years ago with this, that the cars had to have a livery, a classic Porsche livery or one inspired by, that uh, Darren actually had it with the livery used on the factory 962s and 956s at Le Mans in the Group C days, wow. which was, of course, cigarette-sponsored. Yes. And uh, yeah, and um, I, th I think he actually even asked the question if he was allowed to put the cigarette sponsor's name on it because it was historically accurate. And yeah, uh, yeah no, you can't basically. <laughs> Not anymore, unfortunately. No. But it did look immaculate in that in that uh, strip. I'm not even sure if I'm allowed to say the cigarette company's name, so I'm not basically. <laughs> but yeah, it was it was what you saw on the side of the car when Derek Bell won several or more. So there we go. Right, so that car is now off, which is good. So that means we can go and pick up Darren Lebet's uh, car, which hopefully won't take uh, too long. And then those who are waiting on the grid will get the chance to head off onto what's going to be uh, possibly another formation lap, just to kind of feel what the conditions have changed. Because, of course, with that oil or that liquid being uh, dropped onto the circuit down at Oggies, I just want to make sure they can uh, find out where that is before they go racing. So I'd imagine another formation lap before the race gets underway. Uh, whether we get the full distance, we'll have to wait and see. But uh, I think you were exactly right earlier on about how cunningly planned that's been because the, uh, the, the, the truck that the Stephen Shaw's car was on has dropped him over the barriers exactly where... Darren Lebet's car appears to be. So there's fantastic organisation going on out there. Top work, everybody. And you always look at these pictures and think, oh, there's no room to do any of this. But there's loads of offcuts here at Snetterton now. Through the Armco, you can see the course car, which was just trying to get through. That's kind of cut through from the pit lane. So there's loads of little roads they can use just to get to places a little bit quicker. And of course, for safety these days as well, the medical car has those uh, approaches as well, which you can just see uh, coming down. Uh, that's just as a precaution, by the way. These are all those the situations. We, we send the medical car out. Uh, in an instant like that, it's always handy to, to get the drivers checked over, but there's, I'm sure, nothing serious to worry about. Just the medical car going round, checking with the drivers, happy that they're okay, and uh, if need be, they can take to the, uh, be taken to the very um, uh, nicely placed medical centre here at Snetterton. That's right, yes, one of the, uh, the superb facilities that Snetterton has, and uh, you know, I do have to say how, how fantastic these circuits are these days, and how the facilities have improved hugely in the last few years across the country, to be quite honest. 
you know, I'm not going to name names, but sort of, sort of 25 years ago, certain circuits you wouldn't really want to take your family to now, but now the facilities are superb. And uh, why wouldn't you? And you could have a great day out. Indeed you can. So uh, very shortly, we're going to be back on the way just to the Darren LeBette car to uh, get rid of in terms of picking up and taking back to the pit lane. And um, as Paul said, you can come along here, um, not just this weekend, but plenty of other weekends coming up this year as well. We'll take you through some upcoming events very shortly if we get time. But we are back here tomorrow. Unfortunately, we're not live streaming. So if you want to come along and you're not too far away from Snetterton, uh, come and join us because we've got another full day of racing to look forward to. Uh, we've got a few changes tomorrow because we are joined by the uh, Z Cars Championship. They'll be here with qualifying and two races we've also got the production golf gti championship they again have a qualifying and two races and just to note that the uh, race restart will be over 18 minutes so we've lost a few minutes but we've still got plenty of uh, time to race for the porsche 911s and also the boxster cup so we look forward to that um so yeah mm. tomorrow production golf with us as well sports 2000 have two further races to look forward to and uh, we also are joined by the northern saluna sports car championship which always bring a big uh, flurry of different cars so we're looking forward to that two races as well and I think this is going to be the inaugural uh, Historic Racing Drivers Club Jerry Marshall Trophy which is going to be absolutely fantastic this is for I think pre-83 uh, Group 1 touring cars uh, which if you like those sorts of things which many people do uh, come and join us tomorrow they've got that quite sounds a, spectacular does, to be it? quite honest when I haven't I'm, actually looked at the entry list to be fair I should have done shouldn't I but I think it's quite big one of, one of my last PR jobs when I was with Vauxhall in 1999 was actually here with Jerry Marshall and we gave Jerry a drive in the Vectra touring car that John Clennon had been using earlier in the year. It was, it was a thank you for something. I was never quite sure what for, but uh, what a delightful gentleman he was. He was, and I think this is a great uh, legacy to, to leave this uh, Jerry Marshall Trophy, which is, this is the first one they're going to run, but it's going to be a thing that's regularly done uh, for next year in a, a series of races. So we look forward to that. Always remember Jerry's uh, Vauxhall Forenza. Lovely, lovely car indeed. And uh, yeah, tomorrow's race should be good. It's a qualifying session and a 45-minute race. And the entry list brings cars from uh, Ford Mustangs, Alfa Romeos, Ford Escorts, uh, Triumph Dolomites, got the VW Sirocco's out there. There, Ford Capri's, uh, Vauxhall Forenza, as we said, which uh, Jerry used to run uh, back in the day. So there's plenty for everyone. The Rover SD1, which is a well, uh, three and a half litre V8 Rover, fantastic. So uh, yeah, if you're about tomorrow and you want to come and join us, plenty of racing to look forward to here on the 300 circuit. Uh, with I think the headline race definitely going to be the Jerry Marshall Trophy. So uh, it's going to be a busy day. Look forward to it. Uh, unfortunately, we do lose Porsches tomorrow. They're not back with us, but they get, uh, as I said, a day to relax and uh, look forward to their next round in a few weeks' time. That's right. Yes, yeah, so, heck, you know the schedule picks up this time of the year, isn't it? But I think we're going to be fairly ready to go fairly soon. I'm suddenly hearing engines starting to rev outside. Yep, so they've all been told to fire back into life, which they've all done. Hopefully, no issues. And very shortly, they're going to be heading off on, as we said, to a formation lap and then an 18-minute race. So slightly shorter than expected, but uh, that's what they're going to be allowed to have as the countdown now comes once again. So the one-minute board is up there on the gantry and uh, it's going to be a challenge now to see if Tim Bates, firstly, can get the start right, uh, secondly, to take another win this year. That's right, yeah. I think I, he, you'd feel he'd learned his lesson, I wouldn't so. you, to be quite honest. I, I slightly got the feeling that he was trying to give back the advantage he gained just in that first little start, just to see if that actually did him any good. But, uh, yeah, no, we've got a clean slate. It's a t you know, fresh go at everything. Everyone's had a little bit of time to think about things, which could be good or could be get, can be bad in some scenarios. But, uh, yeah, Darren King was probably the loser there, wasn't he? Because he's now got a few cars in front of him again, whereas he had actually got to the front of that Boxster Cup pack very, very quickly. Certainly had. So there are the boxsters as they work the way uh, off of the grid. Just trying to work out where Mike Thompson is. I think he's a little bit higher up than we, we thought he would be. So uh, I think that's worked out for him. It has worked out very nicely because I think there's at least two, if not three, cars that were in front of Mike that are no longer there. So we'll wait to see what he does. There's Tim Bates then trying to get the warmth into the tyres once again. The two cars behind that remain within the 911 Challenge are uh, for this race, Neil Harvey, and also the uh, the man who's brought out his new car for this weekend, Stuart Jeffcoat. Uh, so that Porsche 993, just getting some uh, testing miles under his belt before he uh, heads back to his other series. And hopefully uh, Stuart will do a few more 911 Challenge races this year as well, because it's uh, nice to see him out. And, it's nice uh, to see that car. It's a beautiful car. It's nice, isn't it? Um, very nice indeed, the 993. It sounds nice as well. It does. That one there in second position, number 44. So that's uh, Stuart's car as it works its way down towards Agostini. Uh, there's the leader then in terms of the 
Porsche Boxsters. So let's see what Wayne Gregory can do. Uh, with some strong competition behind there. Peter Evans, uh, Darren King, and also the uh, next of those cars in the line there, just heading its way through Derek Bridges. So yeah, plenty of competition still remains in the Boxsters. So this could be a, a nice lively race once again. I think very much so. Yeah, we've, we've got a reputation to keep up, please. <laughs> no, it's been entertaining so far. And as I said before, you know, it's, it's that strange mix of, sort of you know, people like Mike Thompson, who've done two or three seasons now and are relatively experienced. And, uh, you know, the complete and utter newcomers who are uh, you know, just throwing themselves into it and proving very, very competitive. Certainly are. So, as we said, a reduced distance of 18 minutes, just working our way through the uh, incident zone. So, that's where all the uh, cement dust has been laid down just to soak up as much of the uh, fluid as possible. But I think most of it is offline there. Unless you run wide, you're going to catch some of that. But the majority are just going to head through and kick up a bit of dust. So, it shouldn't deter too many drivers. And hopefully, we'll still see a few moves happening down there because that's one of the, uh, the positions where quite a few drivers like to dive to the inside line to try and get those... Uh, places away so I think that could be a, a prime opposition in terms of passing and more windscreen wipers but well, I never like seeing that I never know if they've been left on by mistake or if there is actually uh, rain coming from the air yeah if, you, if you've got a driver thinking well, what if I flicked with a finger that's fired them off or if there is actually a reason for it it's been that strange sort of day where every now and then it starts spitting with rain but it's, it's never really rained that hard has it no but it's been enough certainly to disturb the drivers we've seen wipers on in previous races and it does give them something to think about a lot of birds coming to spectate which is nice hopefully they're going to enjoy the action prime position there isn't it? it is a fantastic Less. position the outside of quorum it is uh, i always think it's an underrated corner quorum you just seem to be turning right forever and ever and ever and the corner is tightening as you're doing it and it's got tighter since it was redeveloped as well. It, it used to be a lot more open, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, very much so, as it was when I first came here in the late 90s. So, yeah, real challenge these days. Uh, so it is a really tight corner. You kind of you think it's never going to end, and all of a sudden you've got to turn left uh, and hit the brakes at the same time. So it can catch quite a few drivers out there, but uh, great challenging corner is Corum as the cars now work their way into position. So there's Tim Bates, all alone, unfortunately, on that uh, front row now. There's no Rob Holliman. Uh, then behind him is number 44, which is Stuart Jeffco, who also finds himself on his own as well, because we should have had Sarah Thompson alongside him. Uh, then the full complement on row number three, which is going to be the car of Neil Harvey and the pole sitter in the uh, Boxster class, which is Wayne Gregory. So that's how they all line up. Um, a little bit further forward creeps the number 11 machine, just trying to get all the benefit you possibly can. So Neil Harvey now comes stationary. Uh, green flag very quickly waved from the back. Everyone hold position until the red lights come on and go out. Let's try and uh, get a clean start this time round. Oh, there goes another one. Eric Bridges hasn't learned his lesson, unfortunately. Red lights now come on and off they go. So we are away. Eric Bridges waits for everyone to go past. And who makes the best start from the front of the grid? Let's have a look. Uh, Tim Bates hasn't because straight past him has gone the number 11 machine of Neil, Neil Harvey. That's a phenomenal start by Neil Harvey, isn't it? He really did get that car away very, very well. I think Wayne Gregory's got the better also of uh, Stuart Jeffcoat. So he's passed one of the 911s already in terms of the challenge series up towards the uh, Wilson hairpin they go for the first time. And it will be Neil Harvey that leads the way. Tim Bates second, uh, Wayne Gregory third. Then it's going to be Stuart Jeffcoat. It's Darren King third. I'm, I'm oh, sure that's Darren King. Yeah, Tim Bates powers out the Wilson hairpin. That car really does accelerate. Let's have a look then to see who emerges. Right, there's Tim Bates into the lead. Uh, you're right, it is Darren King with the grey and the black machine. So he's now up into third. How long that will last, I'm not too sure because drawing alongside now is Stuart Jeffcoat. Uh, should fairly easily get to the inside and past. And, of course, Darren King won't want to battle too hard. He's more worried about what's happening with Peter Evans there. That's right, he's got Pete Evans behind him and another person to gain a couple of spaces on the opening lap because I think in the third of the boxes is Mike Thompson, our race one winner. He is, isn't he? Yeah, there he goes. The yellow and black machine, number six, up to third. So this race gets better and better uh, for Mike Thompson. So as we said, once that first wing comes along, like buses come quicker and quicker, don't they? So uh, well, he's up there. They sometimes say that the first win's the hardest. After that, you suddenly realise what you have to do to win. But uh, he's looking very, very racy. As those two bottled up between, behind Stuart Jeffcoat. I think it's just taking it gingerly on this first lap in that lovely car of his and that is actually letting Darren King who's running third overall ease away a little bit from his the people he should be racing 
Yeah, had a squeal of tyres, and there you go, there's a car which has gone round, Simon Ruffle Ward, so he's now in that same area where we saw the incident in the uh, initial start, so hopefully he can fire that car back into life and get onto the tail of the field, but he would have lost quite a lot of time to the rest of them, as he does get going, which is good, so back on his way. Uh, here's Darren King, still for now keeping at base, Stuart Jeffcoat, so a great job he is doing, and that just helps him, doesn't it, keep Peter Evans a car back as well, but not for long, because Stuart thinks about the inside line through Corum, uh, let's see how that ends, as they come back into sight he's still yeah. on the inside line and he should hopefully be through i think he's through yeah that, i think darren has to be a little careful to get doing moves like that because he doesn't want to then get himself offline and compromise his next corner with pete evans and mike thompson so close behind him and that now puts him on the back foot to peter evans so he gets the drag out of murray's up towards the line they come uh, not quite side by side but mike thompson is definitely going to have a look now on the second place man in class as they turn their way in towards richie's corner and mike thompson thinks about the inside line but quite uh, can't quite get there now so Peter Evans holds on to it and it's again like earlier on you think you've lost time you then gain time through the next corner and bring yourself onto the tail of the next car so this is very close once again between King uh, Peter Evans who goes to the outside line Mike Thompson is back with them and look who's there with them as well the number 53 machine who was effectively on pole position uh, after the, the ones we lost and is now back up to the top three and fourth place so that's fantastic because three of the lead four cars are displaying that novice cross we discussed earlier <laughs> on the back so it really does prove that as a former are in a way of getting into motorsport this really really works but uh, it's going to be interesting we've got a time penalty of 10 seconds for number 38 i think that was the car that you spotted that actually slightly jumped the start wasn't it yeah, it was yeah eric bridges wasn't it who just uh, again got caught out by that yellow light coming on and going off thought it was uh, the red light but unfortunately it wasn't for eric so 10 seconds for him to be applied as the leaders of class uh, three work the way now down towards the right hander at Oggies uh, once again starting to close up here between Darren King uh, Peter Evans and Mike Thompson although now in fourth place unfortunately Wayne Gregory's just dropped a little bit further back now he has he has which is going to let Mike Thompson start focusing on what's in front rather than what's behind so it's uh, going to be a little bit of a battle and then uh, just behind them they got Vikram Sudera so Vic Vikram's actually quite twice set fastest lap so very very quick driver out there so he's got a little space in front of him he's got those cars out there as a as a hare to chase basically it's going to be interesting to see what he can actually do indeed so the leader has gone once again tim bates on his way out front james neil uh, sorry neil harvey is there in second place in this race and uh, stuart jeffco now trying to reel him in which he's doing a, a good job of so second and third coming close together second and third in the class three almost changes there as mike thompson thinks about a move to the inside line of peter evans but we've seen this happen before i didn't quite come off towards Richie's corner and as soon as he did that then Peter Evans seemed to get closer to the race leader and that's exactly what's happened again here because he's closed that gap he gets a nice toe out of Murray's corner and could be in a position to challenge up towards Richie's on this next lap I think you're exactly right I think that cost Mike Thompson rather than actually gained him anything that little move so through they go at uh, top four in class three. Oh, and Stuart Jeffcoat is also pulling off the road as well. So in his new car for uh, this year, seems to have some problems because he stays out of the way through Richie's hand aloft out the car, which just indicates to everyone else that he's slowing and the indicator comes on at the same time. So a real problem with uh, Stuart there and was just about to make some moves on to uh, Neil Harvey. But uh, unfortunately, that comes to nothing with just under 13 minutes to go within this race and I think he's going to probably pull off down through the back door somewhere very shortly. That's right, yeah, there's a little route back into the paddock, isn't there, once you've uh, got on the run down towards Agostini, so fingers crossed there, but we're back to that lead battle in the Boxster Cup and it's uh, Darren, Darren King with uh, Peter Evans just behind him, just pulled a couple of lengths now over Mike Thompson, that really moved through Corum really didn't help Mike Thompson at all. And as you said before, I think if he's not careful, he's going to have Wayne Gregory he's got to worry about behind him. He needs to start just inching himself back towards that lead pair and maybe let them battle for a while and see if he can pick up some of the pieces. Indeed. So here they come, Darren King, who has been a race winner this year. We're getting to a stage now where we've had five different winners. We're very shortly soon going to have a double winner, but we'll have to wait and see because at the minute Darren King is in that position to take a second win of the year. But uh, Peter Evans, also a winner, right up behind him. Mike Thompson, uh, race winner for the first time earlier on, right there with them as well. So this is getting close and close. 
I think it's by, by, by your logic, I think we need to start cheering on Wayne Gregory, who hasn't won, isn't <laughs> it? Yeah, just, to, just to keep it fair, because I like the idea of having a different winner for every race. He's not too far back, actually. Uh, he's looking quite menacing now with the lights on as well, so he's uh, determined to get up there. Uh, first of all, he needs to get onto the podium as Peter Evans gets ever closer uh, to Darren King, and he gets a good run out of the Nelson corner as well, and he goes to the inside line, so a real slow corner there for Darren King. Puts him on the outside run now through the bomb hole. Mike Thompson comes into the mix uh, to the inside as well, so Peter Evans is through. Darren King tries to shut the door. That doesn't work because Mike Thompson is already up and past him. And just like that, Darren King goes from the lead down to third place. So uh, that's changed things towards the front. And I'm sure with that battling has uh, probably brought Wayne Gregory into the mix as well. He's not quite in camera shot, but I don't think he's going to be too far adrift there down in fourth place. As they come up towards the line, another lap to be completed then. On to lap number uh, four they go. And Mike Thompson now up into second is very quickly thinking about trying to get the race lead away as well from Peter Evans. They go three wide in towards Richie's corner. Hopefully this works well for the three of them, which it does, as they all come out in the same order. First, second and third, Pete Evans, Mike Thompson and Darren King. That's right. Darren King got called out of the same place he did in the first race. I think that's just pretty, probably an experience. That's quite a tricky part of the circuit out of Nelson's and into the bomb hole. And he's just letting people get inside him. And maybe he shouldn't, but uh, let's see if he's learnt from that. It's another tricky corner, isn't it? Because you're braking, you're changing down gear, you're turning into the left-hander, then back to the right. So you, there's lots of things to do at that part of the track, isn't there? Very, very much so. So it's, uh, you know, we, we can watch these guys and criticise, but, you know, they're, they're very, very busy in the cars. They're focused and their, uh, you know, their attention is in front of them, is behind them with what the car's doing. So, uh, and he's had a little bit of a look there into Mike Thompson. That was a little ambitious, I think, if that was going to come off. Yeah, and again, you don't want to be kind of challenging into a corner where you're going to lose on the exit so it's all about thinking isn't it about what the next corner might deliver so that might be a thing for, for Darren King to bear in mind but he's doing well still they're in third place and as we thought Wayne Gregory now not too uh, far back as uh, Stuart Jeffco has finally made it to the pit lane which is good so he's done a full lap at very much reduced speed but he's made it back without too many dramas which is uh, always good to see. That's right now it's, it's swings and roundabouts there isn't it because now we're seeing Mike Thompson starting to close up again as the cars disappear from our sight coming down the straight. Now, last time in the last straight, Mike, Mike was uh, pe peeking out here and trying to persuade people that he was going to go on the inside. But this time, I think he's staying there with Pete Evans. Maybe he's going to focus more on the exit of the corner more than, than rather than the entry. Certainly is. So through he turns and powers his way through. These boxes are not too far away from the back of Neil Harvey, actually. So they keep him uh, with the second place man at the minute as they turn away now on towards the right hander of uh, Corum. But uh, Peter Evans still leads class three just ahead of Mike Thompson. Slight gap now just emerging between uh, the next two, isn't there? Because uh, Darren King just dropping back slightly, but it wouldn't take long for him to rejoin this battle if the top two start to fight once and more. But they power their way through and now they're actually right with Neil Harvey up to towards the line so just under nine minutes to go uh, this is the fight for second third and fourth overall uh, but more importantly for the lead in class three as Peter Evans goes through uh, leads another lap just ahead of Mike Thompson Darren King and Wayne Gregory uh, now your top four and uh, not bad job Victram's doing here in number 66 uh, Vikram Sidera is very shortly to cross the line but still finds himself inside the top five places it is yeah I'm, I'm surprised they're, they're staying so close to Neil Harvey to be quite honest and this Unless he's got a problem, because that's like the ultimate indignity, I think, mm. would be having having the battling boxers go past you. So uh, possibly Neil's just keep just trying to keep out their reach, but uh, we'll keep an eye on that. Certainly will. So down towards Palmer they go once more. Brake lights dab on just for a, a second or so, and then they continue with the, the run through there and on towards the left-hander of Agostini. This could uh, almost cause a problem for the boxers because if they catch Neil Harvey, they've then got to think about trying to get through as uh, Mike Thompson oh, makes a big lunge down the inside line on Peter Evans. That probably wasn't quite on there because uh, that was a, a move which uh, just needed a bit more consideration to get through the corner rather than barging into the side of Peter Evans. But they've both survived, which is uh, a good thing. It means Mike Thompson now drops further back from the race lead up and brings Darren King into the equation once more, who now looks for the inside line as well. That's surely going to put out Mike Thompson a bit wide onto the dirty stuff, but he manages to survive without too many problems. So second, third and fourth, and also the leader of the class, stay as you were, but just wondering if that's done any damage to those two cars. I'm amazed at if it won't, wouldn't have done any damage to Mike Thompson because he seemed to take the impact right on his front right-hand yeah. wheel. And if that hasn't, at the very least, put his settings out so the tracking or the towing or whatever is slightly different now, I will be absolutely amazed. Oh, here comes Wayne Gregory having to think of uh, getting past Darren King. But again, he wasn't quite close enough there. So uh, time will tell, won't it, on those two cars if they have uh, suffered any uh, problems with it. But 
through they come now in towards the uh, bomb hole. Wayne Gregory is definitely a man to watch out for here because if things like that continue to happen, uh, then they could be once again back into the, the mix of this uh, this lead battle. But uh, for now, that seems to have helped just slightly. Pete Evans, although he took the, the brunt of the impact from Mike Thompson, he's uh, continued to hold this advantage. And now if Mike Thompson has got a problem, that's going to delay Darren King and surely give Peter Evans a... Uh, uh, a bigger lead and already now Mike Thompson just slows briefly across the line uh, to the outside goes Darren King so this could be a move now up into second place as they head their way in towards Richie's corner and the job is done before they even get into the first turn there yeah that made Darren made that look very very easy didn't he set the car up for a long way ago got a very good exit out of Murray's and was just powering past virtually on the straight yeah definitely so uh, no problems at all there for for Darren King and straight away he's closed the gap down to Peter Evans as well so this possibly could be some uh, ramifications from that move he made a lap ago for Mike Thompson because all of a sudden now the number 53 machine of Wayne Gregory is starting to put the pressure on through the left-hander at Palmer so uh, this could be uh, unfortunately some problems starting to arise for Mike Thompson who earlier on today picked up his first race victory uh, but for now he's down there in third place and under pressure from Gregory in fourth. Here comes though Darren King right now onto the tail of Peter Evans. So leaders back together. Uh, both of them have now caught up with Neil Harvey once again. So it's a uh, battle resumed for the lead of the class. Yeah, almost how we were a little while ago, isn't it? But, uh, oh. Darren, oh, big twitch from oh, Darren oh. King. The back end just steps onto the grass and goes oh. and he's held it. He, he's, uh, a car went twice, he held it twice, but he couldn't hold it the third time. Almost he got that. He almost, he almost, almost he had held it. that, yeah. That's, That's so close. What a shame. Darren King just got out wide at Hamilton. He then went one way, and again, it's the same situation we saw from uh, earlier on in this race. Uh, he looked like he had it straight, but as soon as you fight that car, it just wants to go the other way every single time. And the more, of course, you put into the steering wheel, the worse it gets. So... Uh, Again, he'll learn from those mistakes and, of course, how to deal with them. But I don't think even the best of uh, the drivers can sometimes deal with those sorts of incidents. No, no you, you, there comes a point when you just can't react and you just can't really turn the wheel fast enough no. to get it from lock to lock to pull the car back. You're just making it worse and worse, exactly as you described, Matt. So uh, that's a shame because that was bringing up to be a fun battle. Well, he's, he's, he saved himself to live another day, so that's that's good. He's still in the race. He's still got a chance to close back up, but, of course, he's a little bit further back now from where he wanted to, uh, to have been. And uh, Peter Evans, the pressure, keeps coming, but he keeps fighting it, doesn't he? It was once from Mike Thompson. It was once from Darren King. I wonder if Wayne Gregory's got anything to, to give to Peter Evans that he can maybe not deal with, but... Uh, uh, Peter Evans still holds on to the class lead then as he comes up towards the line. He is now clear by uh, a good second or so over Mike Thompson, who's back up into second position in the class. So Mike Thompson now ahead of Wayne Gregory. And that gap actually is two seconds, isn't it, between the two of them? So a little bit more comfortable now for the number 22 machine. Uh, very comfortable, in fact, for this man, Tim Bates, who now leads by 25.2 seconds. So uh, we've seen this already this season at the uh, first couple of races at Donington Park. And uh, Tim Bates is uh, once again off in the distance and no one really to challenge at the minute. No, very, very consistent, Tim. I think he was looking forward to a battle with Rob Hollyman, to be quite honest. I think they both were. So uh, you know, a bit, of dis a bit, bit disappointing there. But, uh, yeah, you know, you, you're not going to slow your pace just to look for a race, are you? He's just going to happily take the win. With uh, Mike Thompson tucked up the back of Wayne Gregory now. He's lost that place, but he seems quite keen to try to get it back. Yeah, Wayne Gregory has to uh, kind of defend in towards Agostini. He wasn't really too sure what uh, Mike Thompson was going to do there. Of course, he would have seen it right in front of him a couple of laps ago. Mike Thompson diving to the inside of Pete Evans. So he was probably a bit wary about what Mike would have done on that same corner. But uh, Wayne Gregory holds on for another day in second place. And they both need to bring this gap down now to Peter Evans. As we said, two seconds last time through. And ideally, they need to be working together rather than battling. Because if they can do that, they'll, of course, benefit from a toe from each other that will, of course bring them a little bit closer to Peter Evans whereas Peter Evans hasn't really got anyone to help him I think Neil Harvey's now far enough up the road not to give him that much of a toe so uh, they do need to be working together but you tell a racing driver that they don't listen do they they don't at all but also the clock is ticking down now I think we're possibly going to be going on to maybe two laps I'm not quite sure where the leader is it's going to depend when the leader crosses the line which should be fairly soon in fact as I speak so uh, I think we're going to get possibly two more laps out of this. Yeah, it looks that way. Two minutes 12 is what Tim Bates is currently doing. Two minutes 20 just over left on the clock. So it's going to be close, but I think they will just about squeeze through for another lap as the Class 3 battle heads its way down towards uh, Murray's once again. It's still Wayne Gregory ahead of Mike Thompson for second place. But let's see now what the gap is between uh, this battle and, of course, 
the race leader, Peter Evans, who is about to come across the start finish line behind Neil Harvey. So there he goes in second. There goes Pete Evans. And his lap time is a 217.5. Behind Wayne Gregory does a 216.2, which is his best lap of the race. And he's 1.3 seconds quicker than Peter Evans. So this uh, different winner from every race so far is still on the cards, Paul. That's a fantastic lap, isn't it, from Wayne Gregory at this stage of the race. Maybe he's realised what actually is there for him. <laughs> And it's going to be interesting to see if, how quickly Pete Evans notices that that car behind is getting closer by the corner. And we still don't know if there's any real damage to Peter Evans' car because there could well be after that uh, slight bit of contact with Mike Thompson. Uh, although both of them have kind of kept up the pace there or thereabouts. So if there is any damage, it's not that significant, which is uh, slowing the pace dramatically. So we'll wait and see what they do. Uh, Mike Thompson is still putting all the pressure. I can just see briefly through the camera there on Wayne Gregory, who is now having to defend. So he's almost with Peter Evans, uh, who is almost now back with Neil Harvey. So they're all back on the defensive run as they head down towards Hamilton. But uh, Wayne Gregory is really uh, driving like a man possessed at the minute. He is. As you said earlier, Mike Thompson's actually better off letting him go for a few corners and just get much closer to, uh, to Pete Evans. So this is where it comes complicated because uh, he's now defending. He's losing more time to Peter Evans, who has now almost again caught the back of Neil Harvey. So on towards the Bentley straight, they go for what's going to be the eighth time of asking. And we reckon we're going to squeeze in one more lap because the checker flag is being unfurled. But I think they're just holding it just in case but I think Tim Bates should just squeeze through for one more oh, oh and Wayne Gregory there had to defend at the last possible minute from the number six machine because uh, Mike Thompson again was looking to, to pull a move where you normally don't really see one no that would have caught him by surprise I think distinctly so yep yeah, you're quite right about Tim Bates crosses the line with still around 10 seconds on the clock so uh, the lead has gone on to the final lap which means for these guys they are then going to be going on to their final lap as well Certainly are. So Tim Bates goes up to the Wilson hairpin for his final time. He's uh, driven impeccably once again here today. He has not really had the challenge we would have expected. I think Rob Hollyman was the man who definitely took it to him in qualifying. But uh, then through the first race, unfortunately, with the problems, Rob retired. And before this race even got underway, Rob was off the track and not taking any further part, which is a, a real shame for, for Tim. But uh, nonetheless, it looks to be four from four here this year so far in the nine 11 a series but what's going to happen in the boxster class because that's still up for grabs with peter evans and now mike thompson gets to the inside pushes out slightly wide there uh, wayne gregory who now fights back to the inside in towards the wilson hairpin but mike thompson uh, feels there might be just one more chance here to get onto terms with peter evans and take what could be for him his second win of the day that's a fantastic move through the first corner very very brave to overtake through there mike thompson so uh, we were discussing earlier on if his car handling might be out after that big whack he gave pete evans but uh, apparently not well if it is he's adapting very well to it I very very well say. yeah so down towards Agostini he goes for one last shot to try and catch up with Pete. He's going to be absolutely banzai on the brakes now, isn't he? Every single turn he goes into, he's going to be as late as he can on the brakes. He'll try and carry the momentum through the corner. And let's see what he can do in terms of firstly closing the gap. It's quite a big gap to close down, but uh, if he can do that, that's good. If Then secondly, he can get the move through onto the race leader because uh, uh, they're getting very close down towards Oggies. And now Neil Harvey might be a little bit of a... A, a, a man in the way for, for Peter. Pete, Pete's right on his rear spoiler as they're going out, actually out onto the uh, Bentley straight. So as you say, that's going to be interesting that Neil Harvey's just got the power though to pull away. But Mike Thompson seems to be reading the leader in. It certainly has. And I think Peter Evans will slow out in the corner as well with being so far up the back of Neil Harvey. But Tim Bates will come to the line with the checker flag at the ready. And he'll be a four-time winner so far this year in the 9-11 Challenge Series as he takes the checker flag in style. Here is the battle for what's going to be second overall for that man going through but more importantly for third place overall and the win in class three and Mike Thompson has gradually brought that gap down so corner by corner again Mike Thompson is almost there I always want to shut my eyes because I've seen what <laughs> Mike Thompson's done already today in this race let's see what happens uh, with the drag to the line there's Neil Harvey in second place but we need to be looking just further back here with Peter Evans who is absolutely gunning for uh, Neil Harvey first off but also for what's going to be the first man uh, to take a double win this year in class three and it's going to go the way of Pete Evans who comes to the line just behind Neil Harvey in second. Pete Evans gets a third place overall and also winning class three just ahead of Mike Thompson and Wayne Gregory who we were hoping for to be another uh, new winner this year but was
wasn't quite there, but third place nonetheless. That's right, fantastic there, actually. The top three in the Boxster Cup, only a fraction over half a second apart after 18 minutes of racing, so uh, very, very close. And now we've got a drag race between Vic Ramsudera and Darren King to the line for fourth in class, and Darren King just holds on. And, of course, that was a recovery, wasn't it, for Darren King after his problems earlier on as well. So King comes through to fourth place in class, uh, fifth place for Vikram Sidera, uh, eighth place for number 15 across the line. That goes away of Shiraz Khan. Uh, these are people we didn't really focus on because there was so much happening up front, but uh, they were still in the race as well. Uh, Eric Bridges, with his time penalty, will drop down to ninth place by the looks of it. And to round out your top ten, another man who had a spin earlier on, uh, Simon Ruffle Ward, comes through to take the uh, final place inside the top 10. That's fantastic. Well, that sadly uh, finishes Porsche Club Motorsports contribution to this race meeting. So just a big thank you to uh, MSVR for putting on yet another well-run and smooth operating meeting for us. Always a delight to uh, be on one of your schedules. A big thank you to everyone who's worked so hard to make this meeting work today. We have to be the race control, the, everyone around the circuit. And uh, yeah, Matt, it's been a delight to share a box with you again. So thank you very much. No problem. Always a pleasure, Paul. You're always welcome and you bring such knowledge to the box as well. So it's uh, much appreciated. Fantastic. And uh, yep, see you soon. Will do indeed. Thanks very much to Paul Jurd. He'll be back, of course, with the Porsche Club Championship and, of course, the Boxster Cup and 911 Challenge Series at uh, what's going to be Alton Park in a couple of weeks' time. As we said, the supercar pageant up there, uh, Porsches uh, with the GT Cup and lots of uh, stuff happening off the circuit as well. So if you want to head north for a, a lovely visit to Alton Park, uh, very much urge you to do so on the 9th of July. But for now, Tim Bates, he's working his way around the circuit, hand aloft once again, uh, taking the applause from the circuit uh, uh, spectators is here and he'll be heading his way very quickly back to the pit lane he's in a rush now he wants to get in there have a quick chat with mark and head off home to enjoy his sunday uh, leisurely sunday i'm sure don't think there's any repairs to be done to that car so we can tuck it away nicely into the garage and uh, hopefully bring it back out with us at uh, alton park in a few weeks time so tim bates your winner for the uh, final 911 challenge series race of the uh, weekend here at snetterton and he'll be joined with uh, neil harvey on the podium in second place overall and of course third place in terms of overall and the winner of class three uh, that will be peter evans who will pick up as we mentioned his second win of the year uh, first double winner this year within class three and that will really help him actually because darren king finished behind him uh, darren labette with a non-finisher mike thompson was also uh, further behind him so again we're going to have an even closer class three championship by the time we leave snetterton which is absolutely fantastic if we keep doing that uh, every single round we should have hopefully everyone in with a chance of uh, taking the championship at the final races at donington park on the 29th of october uh, which would be absolutely fantastic uh, so drivers uh, gradually making their way now in towards park ferme uh, once that has been done we will be catching up with some words with our drivers and then we'll move into our final race of the day which is going to be for the focus cup championship uh, as we said they've had a very busy uh, day one and that's all they get because they're not back with us again tomorrow either but busy day one for them uh, with qualifying and so far two races but there is a third race on the way to complete day one here at Snetterton in just a few minutes time and I don't think there's too much of a clear up operation to be done uh, for the Porsches we did that of course with the red flag so all of those cars uh, should be back somewhere in the, the paddock area and they'll be, uh, of course, heading home with some work to do, unfortunately. But uh, we look forward to having them all with us, as I said, on the 9th of July at Alton Park. But uh, Focus Cup on the way very shortly. In the meantime, Tim Bates has to take his retro race helmet off. It's the open front for uh, Tim Bates, which we don't really see these days. But uh, keeping it very retro indeed in terms of the um, equipment he wears and, of course, the car he drives as well. So he'll jump out very shortly. Uh, there you can see our Class 3 winner as well, which is Peter Evans. He gets congratulated by uh, Darren King. Uh, oh, what could have been for Darren, I think, after that uh, problem he suffered earlier in the race. But he came back well to take fourth in class and sixth place overall. But uh, all drivers down there uh, looking good, working hard. And very shortly, we'll be having a word with uh, the man in the Park Ferme area with our cameraman and ready to talk, hopefully, to our race winner, Tim Bates. Uh, that is going to be Mark Werrell. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, we've got Tim Bates alongside me. Tim, um, Congratulations, it's another win, but first of all, just talk us through the first attempt at the start that didn't quite go to plan. Yeah, I, was, I got my eye on Rob, and Rob had broken down, and he was pulling off, and then I just lost all concentration. I was just, I was just thinking about Rob, and then the, the five-second lights come on, and then I just went. And I, when, the, when the lights went out, and I thought, the lights have gone out, but it's not even the red light. So, <laughs> senior moment, I think. 
thankfully for you, though, um, uh, unfortunately for the other competitors, there was a red flag which stopped that race, which meant that that actual start never existed. So you got another chance and did it properly. Yeah, I was very, very fortunate. And uh, I was really slow off the second uh, start and lost the place. So, um, yeah, one to learn, one to remember from. Alton Park, next time out, will you be there? Yes, definitely. Like Alton Park, one of my favourite circuits. Well, well done on the win. Uh, congratulations and good luck at Alton. Thank you very much. So there we go, there's Tim Bates, a double race winner. We're going to wander over here and grab a quick word with our Class 3 winner who's just busy chatting to the team. So Pete Evans becomes the first double winner in Class 3 so far this year. So come on in, Pete, congratulations. Big smile tells me all I need to know. You are the first double winner in Class 3 this year. Yeah, really? Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that, yeah. No, we, 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 we've all been working hard in the team this year and uh, credit to everybody. It's been it's been tough, a lot of training, a lot of hard work and a great sport team, so it's been fantastic. Well, you see, you, you've been working hard. You had to work hard in that race because there was no giving up. Uh, no, there wasn't, especially after the restart. And, uh, yeah, it was tough and I had a bit of a knock in the second race. We had a bit of a coming together with Mike and it was just, you know, what happens. And, uh, yeah, it was, yeah, so it was tough, very tough, very hot. Uh, and, uh, yeah, yeah, glad to get to the end. <laughs> and final question before we, we look forward to our, our last race that's just on the grid now. Um, that knock that you had, um, did it affect the car at all? Uh, no, not at all. No, no, I don't think it affected Mike's either. I think he finished second anyway. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, it's just like coming together on a, a corner together. So, yeah, no, it's, uh, it's, it's what happens.